One of the big key free agents this offseason was CJ Mosley. He was a player that a lot of teams had on their short list of players to go after this offseason, but the Jets were the ones who ended up landing him, largely because they made him the ninth highest paid defensive player in the league, and the highest paid inside linebacker in the league. There's a lot of things that make CJ Mosley great, but probably his best attribute is his speed and acceleration. I mean, he gets up to his top speed so quickly, and that's so valuable for a linebacker to have. Let's jump right into it with this play. They're playing against Cincinnati, and if you take a look, it is going to be a cover 3 zone, and that's where CJ Mosley is on the screen. If you take a look, there is going to be a Bengal who's running into his zone and coverage, and so the first thing he's going to do is try to initiate some contact and make sure that Bengal can't really move as quickly and can't get to a gap in coverage as quickly, and so that's what he's going to try to do here, and it works out decently well. There's not a ton of contact, but there doesn't have to be, and it's also worth mentioning that if there was a ton of contact, you could get in trouble potentially having a holding or pass interference call, so you don't want to just tackle the guy. So it's a good job by Mosley just to create a little bit of contact, and then what you're going to see after he creates that little bit of contact is he is now playing coverage very well against that Bengal. So Mosley did his part here. He made sure that Cincinnati can't throw it to the middle of the screen, and now they have to look for other options, which is really all you can ask out of a middle linebacker. But of course, they're not just paying him to do what you can ask as a middle linebacker, they're paying him to be a game-changing player, and he absolutely can be. Like, if you take a look at the bottom half of the screen, as of right now, there's a Bengal with a ton of separation on his assigned man, and he has plenty of room to try to get around him. This still very much could end up being a tackle, but Mosley isn't the type of guy who's going to take a lot of chances. He's going to break down to the bottom half of the screen anyways, just in case there is a broken tackle, or in case he gets by that assigned man, Sally Mosley can be in the area. And now, if you take a look, the Bengal does get past his assigned man, and gets the first down, but Mosley is able to get there and make the tackle. This isn't a great play for the Ravens, but it was damage controlled by Mosley. I mean, these plays can easily go for another 10-15 more yards if the middle linebacker isn't in that area. Not only did Mosley do his part and win his one-on-one -on -one matchup, but he was able to run over and limit some damage when a Baltimore Raven wasn't able to win their own one-on-one -on -one matchup. One of the real reasons Mosley was able to get into that play wasn't just because he's smart. Although he is smart, really what makes him so effective is that acceleration. It's the fact that he can get to that top speed so quickly and then run over to either sideline to make a play. Typically, when you have great acceleration, you also have great footwork, and Mosley is no exception. Like, on this play, for example, there's going to be four one-on-one -on -one matchups across the board, and Cincinnati's going to send their center up to try to one-on-one -on -one block Mosley. Typically, this type of blocking concept is kind of a boomer bust type situation, where if everyone makes their blocks, it can lead to a lot of yards. However, it only takes one guy to miss their block for it to end up not going too well. If you take a look on that right side of the screen, this is working out at first pretty well for Cincinnati. There is a huge gap on that right side of the screen, and that's where they're going to be looking to run the ball too. However, take a look at Mosley on this play. What he's really going to do is just get off his block, not by using strength, but he's going to use footwork. He doesn't try to overpower Cincinnati's center at all. He simply just realizes that it is going to be a run to the right side of the screen, and steps over in that direction, and then is able to make a play. It really isn't easy to be able to step over that quickly and be able to get into the play because it's so hard to keep your balance. However, Mosley is easily able to keep his balance, he gets over and is able to make the play. Being fast, able to accelerate quickly, and having good footwork isn't just great because it allows you to win your one-on-one -on -one matchups. It's great because now it means that defensive coordinators can game plan to use you to a better advantage. Like on this play, for example, I'm actually going back a couple of years, as you can tell by the way Peyton Manning is on the field, but take a look at what happens here. First off, it is a good play design. What they're going to do is have six Ravens on the line and another Raven not too far off the line, and two of them are going to be dropping back into coverage. And then what you're going to see is one is simply going to move to the right guard's left, and another is going to go to the right tackle's right. This isn't something you'll never see. This is actually pretty frequent, especially when you're blitzing, to try to generate a big hole for a guy to run through. But this is actually going to work out even better because Denver does have a halfback who's blocking on the left side of the screen. So this now means that Mosley's responsibility is simply to run in that gap that will be opened up on the right side of the screen. But of course, the whole problem of this play is you're now blitzing against Peyton Manning, who makes decisions so quickly, he can easily find a guy who will probably be open since it is a blitz, guys do get open quickly, and he could make a quick throw to pick up some yards. But Mosley gets there so quickly, by the time Manning even realizes what's going on, he just has no choice but to go down because it's definitely going to be a sack. And while I'm on the topic of how Mosley affects game plans, he doesn't just affect game plans in the sense that he can make things easier for defensive coordinators, he also makes things tougher for opposing offensive coordinators. Like if we take this play for example, what Miami's going to do here is have a double team on the interior lineman right there, and they're also going to be having a one-on-one -on -one matchup on the edge rusher right there. Then it's pretty simple, all they have to do is send their halfback up through there to try to get past the line of scrimmage, and then Mosley shouldn't be able to just run through that gap as he's now getting blocked by a right tackle. And since Mosley doesn't know which hole this play is going to be run through, this should be a pretty easy play at least to pick up some yards for Miami. Even if the right tackle isn't able to fully block Mosley, it should still lead to a 3 or 4 yard pickup. However, look at how quickly Mosley realizes what's going on and runs through that gap. I mean, he's there instantly and there's no gain on this play. 
that's one of the problems that Mosley creates against opposing offensive coordinators is you really can't run plays like this against Mosley. You pretty much have to run those types of plays on the opposite side of Mosley, but really that creates problems as well because now you can have your own players running plays that are not really comfortable running. Mosley making plays like that really does throw a wrench in opposing offensive coordinators' systems. I mean, if that's the type of play you like to run on typical first downs or maybe second down in shorts, just to make sure you pick up some yards, when you're going up against Mosley, it just creates this whole other dynamic where you pretty much have to change your entire playbook, or at least a big chunk of it, because Mosley can stop plays like that. One other thing I really like about Mosley is there's absolutely no quit in him. When you talk about guys who give 110% every play, Mosley is absolutely one of those guys. Like on this play, for example, it's going to be pretty simple to the play that I showed you when Mosley was able to sack Peyton Manning, and it's as follows. So again, the way it works is both of the Ravens on that side of the line are going to be running in that direction, which is then going to force Arizona's right guard and right tackle both to move to the opposite side of each other, and should leave a gap for Mosley to run just straight through them. But the interesting thing is, unlike last time when there was a halfback on the opposite side of the field blocking, now the halfback is on that side of the field blocking, meaning Mosley will still have to get past the halfback. David Johnson can seemingly do it all, although I'm sure he's still not too excited about the fact that he has to now block CJ Mosley on this play. But Mosley is going to do something very interesting on this play. Typically, if you're a halfback, basically your whole goal is to just try to take that linebacker out if you are in charge of blocking a linebacker. A halfbacks don't block a linebacker the way an offensive lineman would because they just get owned every time. The whole goal is basically to just put your shoulder into the chest of the linebacker. You want to get very low and just deliver one solid hit, and that'll usually give the quarterback enough time to roll out of the pocket. That's the whole goal if you're a halfback. So what Mosley is going to do here is actually try to avoid that hit by running around David Johnson. Johnson actually plays this very well. He sees that Mosley's doing that, and he's now going to be focused on trying to push Mosley behind his quarterback. That's his whole goal on this play. Again, because if you're a halfback blocking a linebacker, you're not in charge of making a great block. You're just trying to give your quarterback a little bit of time to get out of the pocket or to get away from that linebacker and then be able to make a throw. Johnson is able to push Mosley just enough back that it ends up being a good play for Arizona at this point. However, look at Mosley. Despite almost being on the ground, he absolutely keeps fighting. He's able to still eventually get into the play and get a sack, despite basically running a lap around the quarterback. Most highlight reels of CJ Mosley will just show him winning his one-on-one -on -one matchups and him doing very well, but to me what's always more interesting isn't when a player owns their one-on-one -on -one matchup. Of course, that's great too, you want a player that can do that, because otherwise why do you even have the player on your team? But to me, what always separates the goods from the greats is the guys who don't just make great plays when they have a great situation, but can make great plays even if the situation doesn't work out the way they had initially planned it to work out. He finds ways to make big plays happen, even if that's not necessarily what he was supposed to do on that play. This play is actually a great example of that. If you take a look, that's the blocking concept that Miami will be running, and it's going to be very similar to the couple of plays I've shown you in the past, where Baltimore has an edge rusher run to the bottom half of the screen, and then they have another Raven run right there, which is going to force Miami's right guard and right tackle to move away from each other and leave a gap in that side of the field. Then what they can do is send a defensive back who will actually be blitzing on his play through that gap, and it would give him a much better situation to try to get to the quarterback. As of right now, Miami's halfback actually reads his play very well, and he runs out to try to block the corner on the outside of the screen. Of course, it's still a very hard block for him to make, and he's actually not going to make it, but that's not really important here. Really what I want to talk about is take a look at Mosley on this play. As of right now, it looks like he's getting completely beat, but he's really not. His sole goal is to get that right guard closest to the middle of the screen as possible, and he's doing a very good job of doing that. So he's not getting beat at all. He did his job very well on this play. But if you take a look at where his helmet is pointing, he's looking at the quarterback all the way. He's paying attention to the quarterback. He pretty much knows at this point that his job is to just get the right guard out of the way, and he doesn't have too much else to do. But if you're on the field, you might as well try to impact the play as much as possible. So he's going to stare down the quarterback and see if a throw does come in his direction. But not only is he able to make contact with the ball, but he's able to pick it off and run a long way with it. A lot of players on the line don't have the hands to be able to make an interception like that, but mostly absolutely does, and a large part of that is because while he's great at rushing the passer and stopping the run, He's equally as effective, if not better, in coverage. Like, if you take a look at this play, it's going to be man coverage, and Cincinnati has a route running right there, that if that was the standalone route, it would be a good play against man coverage. However, the problem is, Mosley is actually going to be a part of double teaming him on this play. Baltimore has a couple of double teams on this play, not just Mosley, but what's really key here is Mosley is going to run back, and as a linebacker, as you take a look right now, he's nearly in the end zone. This is not a typical play for a linebacker. I mean, this isn't something you would ask a lot of linebackers to do, but Mosley isn't a lot of linebackers. He's CJ Mosley. 
most teams wouldn't ask a lot of linebackers to move this far back, and, you know, most teams shouldn't ask a linebacker to move that far back, because most linebackers wouldn't be great back that far. Mosley has great speed for a linebacker, and he has great awareness for the ball as a linebacker, which is really why they're going to use him as what's almost a safety position in this play. But also worth noting, take a look at which direction he's facing. He's basically facing that receiver who is cutting towards the middle of the screen. He's doing this because he does have to keep an eye on that receiver, as he is a part of the end of the double team, so he has to make sure that he's able to be in position to make a play. But if you notice, he also isn't fully turned over to that side because he does have to keep an eye on Andy Dalton as well. So not only is he able to backpedal and get in position to make a play like this despite being a linebacker, but he's then able to leap up and make an incredibly athletic interception on this play. Andy Dalton didn't really realize that Mosley was going to be breaking back like that, and a large part of that was because it's so unusual for a linebacker to break back like that. But again, as I keep saying, CJ Mosley is not some ordinary linebacker. He's a special talent. There's been a lot of debate over whether or not a middle linebacker holds the same value that they once did even 15 years ago. Because the game has evolved into such a passing sport, linebackers aren't really holding their value as much as they once did. However, I think Mosley really proves that having an elite level linebacker can mean so much. Typically when I watch tape against a defensive player, one of the things I love to do is watch tape when they're playing against a great quarterback, and not really just quarterbacks either, but also against great offensive coordinators, great offensive coaching staffs as a whole, because I think that really gives you a good idea of how opposing teams will try to go after certain players. Like on this play, for example, it's actually man coverage, and you can tell that by the way Mosley is lined up towards the sideline on this play. Baltimore's running man coverage on this play, so that's why Mosley's in charge of being in one-on-one -on -one coverage against a much skinnier CJ Anderson, and that's why he's at the bottom half of the screen. Because the Broncos wanted to get linebackers out of position, they wanted to get the linebacker who's in charge of covering CJ Anderson out of position, and so their way of doing that was to send a halfback to the bottom half of the screen. So now the play's pretty simple, right? I mean, all you have to do is try to throw it in that direction, as you have a linebacker who's basically trying to play corner on this play. Most linebackers can't play defensive back, so that just seems like it make a lot of sense to try to throw the ball too. He does a very good job of knowing where the first down marker is, and knowing where there's a good chance that the Broncos will try to throw the ball too. He's not giving CJ Anderson that much space. He's very much ready for a cut, and he trusts himself that if CJ Anderson does run past him, he can also get to that speed and run past as well and try to knock the play away and that makes a lot of sense because he is a really talented player in terms of speed and since he didn't give Anderson that much space and it actually is going to be a curl route he's easily able to run back over and knock the ball away Anderson was complaining about a flag on this play, but really there shouldn't have been a flag on this play. That was a good call, good no call there. And it really just goes to show how CJ Mosley can be so talented at pretty much everything. That's what I think about linebackers. I mean, really, the only positions that really are like this are linebackers and safeties, as guys have to both be able to make tackles, be able to be fast, be able to accelerate quickly, and be good in coverage. You pretty much have to be good at everything, and CJ Anderson is pretty good at everything. Going back to my last point about how CJ Anderson can make things very tough on opposing offensive coordinators, this next play is going to be another very good example. If you take a look, what Pittsburgh's going to do here is fake a jet sweep to the top half of the screen and also fake a handoff in that direction. Baltimore is running zone coverage and they're actually running a cover three zone to be more specific and that's really perfect for Pittsburgh as the whole point of this play really is to try to get Baltimore's linebackers to move in and then be able to hit that receiver right there past the linebackers and pick up some yards. For the Steelers, this play is very dependent on can they get the linebackers and safety in that position out of the play. Because if nobody gets out of position, it's going to be a very small window for a quarterback to try to make a throw through. However, if guys do get out of position, this can result in a receiver being completely wide open. And if you take a look, as of right now, it's actually working out decently well. There is a linebacker who's moving very far to the right side of the screen and very far up because he's trying to potentially guard against a jet sweep. And there's also a defensive back who's very far to the top half of the screen because he's also trying to protect against a potential jet sweep. Meaning really, Mosley is the only guy who can make a play on this one. And he's not supposed to be going that far up, which should leave a huge window to get open. However, once again, he accelerates quickly and he reads the play of what's going on. I've talked about him being a smart player. Well, now this is me showing you he's a smart player. He reads what's going on, is able to run in front of the ball, make the interception, and it works out very well for the Ravens. He's kind of one of those guys you almost have to avoid, which is really difficult because a middle linebacker takes up a lot more of the field than a cornerback does, for example. I mean, you can avoid Richard Sherman a lot easier than you can avoid a middle linebacker just because Richard Sherman's always shoved in the corner, whereas a middle linebacker is literally in the middle of the field. It's tough to try him, and this play is a great example. If you take a look, once again, it's a cover three zone, and there is going to be a route right there that's going to try to get into that gap in coverage just before the safeties and the linebackers. This play is going to take a little bit to develop, but now when it does, there is a receiver who is kind of past the linebackers and is a little bit open. However, he's trying to get just past Mosley, and that's usually not a great place to try to make a throw. Mosley is able to leap up very high, intercept the ball, 
and he returns it for what was almost a touchdown until he fumbled it out of bounds, and actually, the Redskins got the ball back. But that's not really important. What I'm really trying to talk about is just how he is in coverage. Maybe he needs to do a better job of keeping both hands on the ball, but then again, that's the dumbest rule in sports, in my opinion. The fact that you can fumble it out of bounds at the one-yard line, and you get the ball at the one-yard line, and you can fumble it out of bounds, and then the other team gets the ball at the 20. I think that's silly. But then again, I could talk about that for hours, and this video is not about that. This video is about CJ Mosley, so that's what I'm talking about. And CJ Mosley, clearly, as I've shown, is just a tremendous talent. I mean, he can do it all. He's going to be a huge addition for the Jets. And I really do think, well, you know, you don't want to always overpay for guys. He is one of those guys that you kind of can say he's worth overpaying for. Because he doesn't just help the middle linebacker out. He helps everybody out. Now he covers a much bigger zone. And this can allow other guys to not have to cover as big of a zone. And as effective as he is in coverage, he's just as effective in stopping the run. And he's just as effective in rushing the passer when he does do it. While he doesn't do it too often, he can still be effective when he does try to do that. Oftentimes when there's a new addition, you kind of say, well, we'll have to see how he fits in that system. But the reality is, when you have a player like CJ Mosley, who can do it all, he can fit in any system. So I definitely think it's a great pickup for the Jets. I think this is a huge addition for the Jets. In fact, I might go as far to say as this is the biggest single addition that any team has made this offseason so far. At the very least, it seems like it's a very much of a no-risk situation, because it seems very unlikely that CJ Mosley won't be able to fit in the New York Jets system, and I definitely expect him to be very talented next year. Thanks for watching my video of CJ Mosley going to the Jets. I had a lot of fun making it, I hope you guys had a lot of fun watching it, and if you don't want the conversation to end just yet, just hit me up on Instagram or Twitter, I'll respond to both because I have no life. The link is in the description, all you have to do is click on the link and it'll send you right to my page, so if you're interested, just do that, and as always, thanks for watching.